We're looking at GSR TB7, and it basically introduces a nice little relationship between sine and cosine, where we learn that they're co-functions of each other. They're connected in some unique way. Now, if you take uh, a trig table, uh, like the one we looked at just a few minutes ago, uh, you, you're going to notice an interesting thing, that if you look down the sine column, and you just look up any number in that column, and I say to you, go find that identical number somewhere else. Um, you would go searching and you would find it somewhere over in the cosine column. So for instance, you might find that the sine of 20, that value, will exactly match one down here where it's the cosine of 70. And I might say to you, pick, uh, pick another value, and you might say, okay, I'll pick, uh, I'm going to pick cosine of, of 23, or, well, not 23, because it's close to this, but let's do 33. And so you'll say, oh, the cosine of 33. And I'll say, all right, go search for that somewhere else. And you'll go, all right, I will. And off you look through all of the table, and you'll say, hey, I found it over here in the sine of 57. The sine of 57. And I say, Isn't, well, that's interesting. Why do we keep finding the same numbers? Good point. And then I'd say, how about the uh, sine of 45, which is right here? And I'd say, go find that somewhere else. And you'd say, hey, it's the cosine of 45. Now, I then obviously want to say, why? What's going on or what's happening? And I say, look at these numbers closely. One thing you'll notice is the 20 and the 70 make 90. 33 and 57 make 90. 45 and 45 make 90. So what we're learning is that the sine of 10 would have to be equal to the cosine of 80. Or in general, that the sine of some angle value will always equal the cosine of 90 minus that angle. And the idea of where this comes from, it isn't just some fluke. We'll take a look at it here under the Elmo. We'll find out that this has to do with the fact that we might be in the very same triangle looking at the very same sides. Let's take a look at it. A cool little relationship appears, uh, as already spoken, between uh, between sine and cosine, and I've already demonstrated, but I'll just do it quickly again, and just get at the heart of why this works. Quite uniquely, like let, let's say I say the sine of sixty-seven degrees is the opposite, which would be x over z, opposite over hypotenuse. Now, in the same uh, in the other reference angle corner, if this is 67, this would be 23 down here. And so if I was to do the cosine of 23 degrees, okay, that would be the adjacent, in this case, x to the hypotenuse, which would be z. You see what happened there? I get the same ratio because these two angles were summed to 90 in other words, if they sum to 90, they're in the same triangle. Sine is looking from one aspect of the triangle. Cosine is looking from the other aspect, but they are looking at the exact same two sides. So what we learn is that the sine of any angle is equal to the cosine of 90 minus that angle. In other words, these two angles add to 90. Then they, the cosine and the sine of those values will be equal. So sine of something is equal to cosine of, of this. So I have to equal 90, which would be 27, would be the value I would put into there. Here, uh, the sine of 34 equals the cosine of something, so that would be, what, 56, because 80, 90, right? 45, 45, that's pretty easy, because they equal 90. And they get into equations where now you say, okay, this angle and this angle together equal 90. And all you do is get into this kind of stuff. Uh, you have to say the one angle and the other angle have to equal 90. 2x plus 10 equals 90. 80 divided by 2 is 40. 
And I won't do these just for sake of time, but, but again, x plus 5 plus 4x plus 10 equals 90. And you just work it out and solve it out. Same thing here, 1 half of x plus 1x plus 24 equals 90. Uh, you get 1 and a half x's equals, uh, what is that, 70, 70, no, 66, yeah, 66, and then you divide 1 and a half into 66, and you get your value for x. Very simple little relationship.